or open graph images. But if you're not, let's dive in. So what is an OG image? Well, an OG image looks a little bit like this. They're the things that customers see before they visit your site. When somebody shares a URL to your page on iMessage or Twitter or Facebook. Uh, so here's some examples. We've got one from Stripe. It's just a Stripe logo with some metadata, you know, the URL, the title, and some description about the page. Uh, we've got one from Webflow, and we've got one from GitHub. And this one you've probably seen before. It's got the PR number, the repo, the diff. Um, it's got a picture of the user. There's a lot going on in that one, and I really like it. Now, why do these ones make a difference? Why should we care? Because they really drive conversions. Uh, this article uh, goes into it from the social media lab about why we should care. Um, essentially, what we found is that good OG images drive engagement. You know, 100%, 50% more retweets. They drive things like 35% uh, boost in engagements with uh, favoriting. Um, and so this is why we should care about them. And what, what do people do that generate OG images uh, that are very successful and very effective? Uh, well, there's a few ways to generate them. Some good, some not so good, and we'll dive in and take a look at all of them. Uh, let's get started with the way that these things have typically been done in the past. And Post Hog has a great article about this. Essentially, they talk about, you know, what did they used to do with OG images on their blog? And what they used to do in the before times, as they describe it, is they would have somebody go and create an asset for every page um, and uh, make sure that it would look good across all kinds of viewports and whatnot. But this got very, very taxing. Uh, their designer, as I said here, would have to work 24 seven whenever they published a blog post. So they wanted to make them dynamic. And what they went ahead and did is they used uh, Puppeteer, which is a headless browser, to go and actually get a screenshot of their website at build time, which is what they cover here. And this worked really well for them, but it has to have some drawbacks. And one of them is that your OG image is only as recent as your latest build. So if you have a lot, a lot of dynamic data, like that GitHub example that we were just looking at here, then it gets a little difficult uh, to do that at build time. Um, and so what people moved to was doing something like what SST does, where they have this uh, nine step process that allows you to create a serverless function to spin up that puppeteer, that headless browser, visit the page, take the screenshot, save that screenshot to a cache somewhere, and then serve the screenshot, the latest one, anytime the route to your image is requested. Um, and now, not only was this a lot to maintain, a lot of processes to have to put into place, but it got to be expensive because a serverless function had to run anytime the page needed a new OG image. Um, and so that was particularly problematic because you needed to run a browser in order to get this image. So people gravitated to a different solution, and this is one that didn't need a browser, and that's uh, Vercel's OG image generation library. Um, and what this does is uh, it gives you an image response from HTML without needing a browser, uh, and it uses a Satori library under the hood. So this, as Vercel goes into their blog post a little bit here, uh, makes things easier, more affordable, and faster. You're not spinning up a browser, so your uh, serverless function can be uh, cold started faster. It can return a response within four seconds, which means you have less failure rates, uh, but also is great DX because you're writing stuff in HTML and CSS. And this seems like a slam dunk, and we'll dive into it, take a look, and then we'll talk about why you may not want to do it this way uh, in just a second. So what I've gone and done is I've cloned the repository for a uh, Vercel starter for a blog, and I've made a small adjustment. I've made them generate metadata function asynchronous so that anytime somebody visits a blog post, um, the metadata will be generated uh, that very first time. And then um, we're gonna take a look now at how the OG image for this page is being generated. Uh, we have this OG image, um, it's being set in our metadata, uh, how's this happening? So the way this works using uh, Vercel's uh, dynamic OG image library is you typically want to create an API route that uses the library to generate an image response from HTML. In this case, 
this API route will read the title from the search params and then interpolate it into some HTML and give us back an image response. Um, and let's take a look at what that looks like. So we'll go to the page here. Here's an article uh, from that blog starter and we're gonna inspect it and take a look at the OG image property. So here, we, here it is. We'll copy this over and paste it. And now we can see the OG image that got generated. Now this works really well if you have to use HTML and CSS to make your OG images, but it does have some drawbacks. Uh, let's take a look at just one. So bear in mind that every time we hit this URL, we are in, uh, starting a serverless function. So what would happen if I wanted to track the number of views that this blog post uh, was generating over time and then display that in my OG image? Again, all just trying to drive engagement on, on my socials. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna track views. Uh, we're gonna get all the views from all our posts, filter by the post slug, and then we're gonna add that to our path uh, in our route. So we'll save this. And then in our uh, route, we're gonna go ahead and pull the views from the URL search params and then display them somewhere. So now when we go back to our page and um, we inspect it, we can see that our tag uh, has updated. And when we go ahead and paste that in, we can see the view count right over here, update. Now this is really neat because this will happen in real time. So if we close this, refresh the page, go back to our OG image tag, copy and paste, we should see an updated view count. And now that works well, uh, seems fast enough, but there's a problem. The problem is that anytime the view count updates, the OG image will need to update, which means we'll have the cache bust, which means we'll run the server function again, and now we're starting to run into a lot of headaches, not just with caching, but also potentially with cost. So how can we mitigate this? Well, one of the things we could do is to just not use a serverless function for this. Um, we are already generating dynamic data here. What if we could use it in our image without having to render our image in a serverless function? So this is where um, using ImageX comes in. We're gonna pull in uh, a, an ImageX image URL to our OG attribute instead of a serverless function. And how is this working? Well, I have a little helper function here that is just gonna build a URL string for me. The way that looks is we instantiate a uh, URL builder library. It's called JS Core, ImageX JS Core. And that will make it easy for me to use some ImageX parameters uh, to, the, to get appended to my image URL. So here I'm giving it a width, height, I'm cropping. Uh, and what that looks like is when I go ahead and inspect the OG tag, we paste that in, you can see that all those parameters are being added as um, search parameters to my URL. And we can take a look at the image that's being rendered uh, as my OG image now. Now, uh, we haven't really copied over all the functionality because we need the title and description and the view count. So let's add that stuff in. First, let's just start with the title. We're gonna use the mark64 parameter to superimpose a URL of just the title text uh, as an image onto our base layer. So the mark64 parameter will render an image of the title text and then superimpose that on our base image. The way that works is we use the text endpoint, we give it the title text that we want, we style it a little bit, and this will give us uh, a URL for that image. Then, that's the URL we set on the mark64 parameter, and we just position it. So when we save, our OG tag will update, and now we have our title text in our image. Now what we need is to bring in the description. So this works the exact same way using the exact same parameter. This time we have body text and a little bit of different styling. So when we copy and paste this in, we'll see our title and our body text in our OG image. Um, so, so far, so good. We've replicated a lot of the functionality, again, without using a serverless function. What we're missing is the views. So let's uh, go ahead and bring those in. We'll use the text parameter, which will add text to our base, base image, um, and we'll just put views next to views and then we'll style it a little bit and we'll save and now when we go to our uh, OG tag and render that we can see we have a title description and our up-to-date 
view counter. And just to illustrate, we'll refresh the page. We're at 75 views now. You can see that there. When we paste that in, we've got 75 views, all without a serverless function, just by appending or changing query params in a URL. Um, and this is fantastic because, again, we're saving on cost, we're saving on complexity. We don't have to worry about the things that we were worrying about before. But just one more trick up my sleeve. What if we change the background image to be something a little different? Let's say we had, uh, I don't know, uh, a darker background and I didn't love it. For this article, it just doesn't fit. Um, well, because I can use ImageX's um, rendering pipeline, I can actually just replace it with somebody I do something I do like, like, you know, uh, a bird's eye view of a beautiful beach. Uh, or maybe we do, I don't know, something like uh, a rocket ship on a launch pad or something. Now the idea being uh, when we do this, uh, we can using some of our AI params, intelligently replace the background with pretty much anything that we want. And again, there wasn't a serverless function. I don't have to maintain the caching or anything like that. It's just handled for me using URL params. Now, obviously on this first render, it's gonna be a little bit slower because we have to actually generate the image the very first time that it gets requested. But um, from this point on, it would be cached and this would happen faster. But this illustrates the flexibility that you can gain from not using a headless browser, not using something like a serverless function to generate an image response, but just using the dynamic data you're already getting from you know your your server components or your you know uh, asynchronous metadata function and feeding that to a URL param. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you liked the demo, and uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to some questions.